forgiveness. It's something that depending on the circumstances can either be easily given or extremely hard to do, if at all. Today's story sees one woman who in the vast majority of cases, you wouldn't expect to forgive the person for what he did. But that's exactly what she did, only for it to come back and bite her later on. Hello, and welcome to the channel. On the 10th of September 1996, police were alerted to a fire located at the home of Sally Snowden McKay. Sally, who was 75 years old at the time, came from a long line of Snowden family members who were a prominent name in the area that she lived. The family owned several properties and had a deep history in Horseshoe Lake, Arkansas. One of the properties, the historic Snowden House, was actually used in the 1994 John Grisham movie, The Client. Sally was a mother to three children, Grace, Katie and Martha. In her younger years, she had moved to San Francisco with her kids before moving back to Horseshoe Lake in her later years to look after the properties and manage them accordingly. Sally wasn't alone when it came to the upkeep of the Snowden portfolio. One of those who helped her was her nephew Joseph Lee Baker. Baker, who was known more commonly as Lee, rented one of the properties on Horseshoe Lake and was a well-known guitarist in Memphis, Tennessee. Lee had played alongside American rock band Big Star, which was fronted by Alex Chilton. Police would arrive to find Sally's home still burning. When the fire was under control, they would quickly find the burned remains of not only Sally Snowden McKay, but also Lee Baker. However, it quickly became apparent that the pair hadn't succumbed to the fire, but that they had both been shot. Investigators also learned that Baker's home had actually been broken into earlier that same day, and it was obvious that items had also been taken. Sally's car was also nowhere to be found on her property. However, it would later be recovered not too far, after it was found crashed. The news of two such prominent figures in the Memphis area shocked locals, but police would only need to wait a few weeks before tracking down their main suspect, 16-year-old Travis Lewis. Travis's family rented a property owned by the Snowden family, and the young teenager was known by Lee Baker and his sons. Under interrogation, Travis would initially deny having anything to do with either the break-in at the Baker home or the double murder at Sally's residence. Although after digging into Travis's whereabouts further, they learned that he was absent from school on the 10th of September, as he had been suspended. Police decided to submit Travis to two polygraph tests, whereby he'd pass the first, but fail the second. Further evidencing why polygraph examinations are as reliable as a chocolate teapot. Police decided to interrogate Travis further, and they would eventually get a result. He would admit to the break-in at Lee Baker's home, but he would say that he didn't act alone at the time. He would also admit to attempting to rob Sally's home, but he and his friend were disturbed by Sally and Lee during their attempt. He would tell police that it was actually his friend who fired the shots that ended the lives of Sally and Lee. Travis and his friend then attempted to set fire to the home to cover their tracks, before stealing Sally's car and crashing it soon after. When police looked into Travis's claims further, they found no evidence to suggest that Travis was accompanied by anyone else on the day. Fingerprints and DNA were recovered from the crashed car, both of which matched Travis. Furthermore, the friend that Travis alleged had conspired with him had a rock-solid alibi. Based on this evidence, Travis Lewis was charged with two counts of capital murder and one of burglary. Despite Travis only being 16, he was tried as an adult, meaning that he was potentially facing the death penalty. However, in April 1998, Travis would enter a guilty plea and was sentenced to 28 and a half years in prison. He would need to serve at least 70% of his sentence before being eligible for parole. Now usually at this stage of the story, we'd be discussing the closing points of this case. But one of Sally's daughters, Martha McKay, would end up doing something that very few would expect of a bereaving child. She would forgive Travis. Martha McKay was born on the 7th of April 1956. Born at Horseshoe Lake, she would spend the first few years of her life living there, 
before her mother Sally and father, David McKay, a professional actor, moved to San Francisco. Despite living in the Golden City, Martha would return to Horseshoe Lake each summer to spend time with her grandparents. She would recall her time at Horseshoe Lake in a 2015 interview, saying the following, Mother would bring us back for the summer and leave us here. It was just wonderful. I felt like I was royalty, with the big house and servants. Everything was fresh from the garden, fresh eggs and all. And we even had a peach orchard. We got to swim every day, and it was just ideal. Both my grandparents just loved having a house full of kids, and they showed it. Martha would graduate from the University of Washington in Seattle, and in the process, began to follow the teachings of Buddhism. After her mother's death, Martha returned to Horseshoe Lake. Over the next few years, Martha would continue to manage the day-to-day -day operations at Snowden House, eventually purchasing the property from the Snowden Estate in 2004. At the time of purchasing Snowden House, it was evident that the property required much work. Martha would decide to convert the property into an upscaled bed and breakfast, as well as using Snowden House as a venue to host wedding parties. She spent several years renovating the property to bring it up to speed with the 21st century, while also preserving much of its original aesthetic. Martha had a thing for renovating outdated properties. As well as Snowden House, she owned several properties, including one in Nevada dating back to 1861. She also wanted to make Snowden House more green, replacing the home's old gas furnace, which she said cost $1,000 a month to use, with geothermal systems connected to the lake, reducing the costs to approximately $250 a month instead. Despite her achievements, the way in which Sally was so cruelly taken from Martha had impacted her greatly. So much so, that she reached a stage in her life where the woman known locally as the Lady in the Lake demanded answers. Martha would arrange to speak with Travis while he was still serving his sentence. There, she listened to his version of events, where he repeated the claims that he didn't act alone, and that someone else was responsible for pulling the trigger that ended the lives of her mother and cousin. Martha would believe Travis, and while acknowledging his role, she ultimately decided to forgive him for what he had done. Martha remained in contact with Travis during his time in prison, and was the only member of the Snowden family to champion Travis at his parole hearings. While Travis's initial parole application was rejected in 2016, Martha was present for the hearing and supported Travis. In 2018, Martha's influence would eventually help Travis secure an early release from prison. Travis would move in with his mother, who was also working under Martha McKay at Snowden House as a housekeeper. For a time, everything seemed to be going well. Travis would work on the grounds without issue, but eventually Travis's behaviour would noticeably change to the point where even his own mother warned Martha that she should perhaps put some distance between herself and Travis, suggesting he had gone back to his old ways again. Martha, however, disregarded this advice and continued to allow Travis to work for her. That was until shortly before March 2020, where according to Martha's sister, Katie Hutton, Martha had sold a chandelier for $10,000 cash. Unsure with what to do with it, she decided to take it back to her home before choosing what to do with it next. Besides Martha, Travis was the only person aware of the cash being in the home, as he was there at the time Martha stored away the money. To the surprise of absolutely nobody listening to this, the money went missing from Martha's home. Given that the only person who knew of the whereabouts of the cash was Travis, Martha had finally sent him packing. While Martha assumed that Travis was now out of her life for good, she couldn't have been more wrong. On the 25th of March 2020, just a couple of days after Travis had been dismissed from his job, Crittenden County Sheriff's Office responded to an alarm coming from the Snowden house. Two deputies would attend the home and find that the back door to the property was wide open. Going inside, they swept through the home clearing each room, before locating a man who proceeded to jump from an upstairs window. The man raced to a vehicle and got in, driving at speed across the yard. However, the vehicle would get stuck, forcing the man to get out and flee by foot. As deputies gave chase, they witnessed the man dive into Horseshoe Lake. They observed him going under the water, although they wouldn't see him rise back out. 
Inside the home, laid the lifeless body of Martha McKay, resting on the top of the marble steps of her home. She had been stabbed multiple times, with the bloodied knife rested beside her. She had been partially covered by a blanket. Several valuable items belonging to Martha were also found in a bag. Police would search Horseshoe Lake with the help of the Arkansas Game and Fish and Crittenden County search and rescue teams, using sonar to scan the lake. They would soon locate the body of the man. He would be identified as 39-year-old Travis Sante Lewis, the same man Martha had forgiven. In a cruel twist of fate, Martha appeared to have stumbled upon Travis burglarizing her home, just like her mother and cousin 23 years prior. Fueled with a mixture of methamphetamines, marijuana and cocaine, as the autopsy on Travis would later find, he beat and attacked the only person who chose to see good in him, but not before she could raise the alarm notifying authorities. Martha McKay was 63 years old at the time of her passing. Thank you for watching. This story was doing the rounds on Twitter recently, and it was a story that completely blew me away. To forgive someone for carrying out such a tragic act, only to have that repeated back on you, is truly heartbreaking. Martha was a person who tried to look beyond what Travis had done, and tried to turn the situation into something more positive. Had she heeded the warning from Travis's own mother sooner, perhaps she would still be here. Sadly though, we'll never know. But I'd like to know what you thought of this story. Should Martha have forgiven Travis? Should she have given him a job? How would you react in her position? Leave a comment sharing your thoughts. If you found this case informative, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, as well as hitting the notification bell so you never miss out when I upload. There's also the option to join up as a channel member, or you can subscribe to my Patreon linked in the description to get access to exclusive content. While there's no obligation, it really does help out the channel, as well as bringing me one step closer to achieving my goal, which is to make what I do here a full-time gig. Speaking of which, here's a shout out to those already helping me out. Needlem Fur, The Alabastard, Mr. Gently Benevolent, Amanda, Krista Lands, Omniblast, Shamu Dog Smith, and Angie Thompson. Thank you for supporting the channel. Until next time, take care and goodbye. For now.